What's up? Hey, man, you want to be serious in this, sir? You want to have some fun? Look at this. Bye, coach. And then there's us. It's awesome. Coach. We planned that out. Yes, we did. Wait. Look. Coach <laughs> Groves. And I'm Coach. Wait, hold on. Coach Horn. Yes, I am. Yes, and we're here to tell you oh, about. Oh, you want to talk about it yet? The Byzantine Empire. Byzantium. Byzantium. Yeah. Bye, Byzantium. Very cool. So, you know, you always say, buddy, that uh, we go in circles. You always say that. We do something. Months later, we come back and talk about the same place again. Back by popular demand. Yeah. You got the P-G-H. That's Professor Groves Horn. Yes, I we're back. I wasn't really talking about us. I was talking about. What did you just do? Rome. What was that? You went, what did you just do? All right. <laughs> what in the world? All right. Um, so. I'm going to go back. Check it out, guys. Let's start it off here. Look at the map. What do you see? You have what's left of Rome. If you look over yeah. here, you've got Italy. That little bit of night. It says Rome. Yeah. Rome has fallen into the Dark yeah. Ages. Yeah. We'll get back to them later who's, on. Who's, who's taking over Rome? Rome is it's, it's in this, this turmoil. In turmoil. Gone. Turmoil is taken Gone. over by a group of Germanic tribes. And uh, anyways, we're going to get back to. from Germania. So the Western Roman Empire, bye bye. Bye, gone. Now we have a brand Ashes. new one, Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire. So this is the Eastern Roman Empire, guys. What's that dot, Coach? Constantinople, Istanbul, Byzantium. Constantinople, Istanbul, Constantinople, Constantinople, yeah. Istanbul, Constantinople. Okay. Istanbul. All right. So just real quick, this is the fun stuff. Describe the rise of the Byzantine Empire, its institutions, and its legacy, including. The influence of the emperors Constantine, which Constantine wasn't part of the Byzantine Empire. He was before that. But emperors Constantine and Justinian, who is a big part of it, and the identifying factors leading to the establishment of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Did you, know, you do that right there? I did all everything that's highlighted, I, I made them bigger. So it's like easier to pull out what I think is the important yeah. stuff. Now, you may pull out something different, guys and gals. But uh, these are the big, here's the big names you got to know. Yeah. And you better know the Eastern Orthodox Church. It's pretty easy to see. We're in the Eastern Roman Empire or the Byzantine Empire. Eastern Orthodox Church goes with it now. Cool. We brought up Constantine. He's not Roman, but he was the first emperor that was a Christian. And that's going to be the start of this, uh, this Christian stuff. Really? Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about that for a second because he's known as the first Christian emperor, but he wasn't, guys. He actually became a Christian himself on his deathbed right before he died. But the reason people call him the first Christian emperor is because he was very tolerant of Christianity and allowed Christians to worship. And if you remember back when Rome was at its height, a bunch of emperors didn't allow Christians to do that. So anyways, that's why Constantine's known as the first Christian emperor. Yeah. Don't forget the battle and all too. So anyways, y'all, we good? And yeah, that's just the standard, y'all. That's yeah. what you have to be able to do. And some of the things that we're talking about just kind of getting caught up. This is where we ended, guys. It says Rome was divided in half. You guys see the division right here. We've already looked at this where, you know, you had two emperors that decided, you know, they were a triumvirate. Now there's only two. They're going to split the kingdom in half. So you got old Rome and then you got Constantinople. And this is the area that's going to fall. Right, coach? Yes, the West will fall, and then the East will remain and actually be, become bigger and better and actually come back and take over some of the West. Yep. They'll reclaim saying, yeah. a lot of it. We'll That's be, right. That's right. But they'll end up calling the Eastern, uh, they'll call it a new place, the Byzantine Empire, under a new capital. Yep. Not Istanbul, but Constantinople. Not Istanbul, but Constantinople. All right, here we go. And in the end, you want to tell us how long did it last? Well, it says before it was Constantinople, the capital was Byzantium. And Constantine the Great is going to rename it after himself. And you're going to see that again, guys, like next year in modern world history. You're going to see lots of, of dictators and rulers that are going to name places after themselves. It says after the name change, the entire Eastern Empire was called Byzantium. So as this place right here, Byzantium, became Constantinople, they named this entire Eastern region Byzantium. So this is the Byzantine Empire here. 
And it says Byzantine flourished for nearly a thousand years after the collapse of the West. So a long time. That's a long time. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're going to basically get into very close to the modern age, Coach. I mean, USA has only been here a little over 200 oh, years. Man, a thousand years. Year. That's yeah. amazing. Let's roll. Let's roll. Oh, who yeah. is that pretty lady? Yeah. Look at that thing. What does she have on her hair? Is that some dreads? <laughs> sure. She's got some dreads. Uh, or is that some little beads? Look like some little beads. No, that is not a female. That is a dude. That's a dude. Another yes. one. Can you find his name? Going to be very, very powerful. You have any Justins out there? Any Justins? A very powerful name. This is who you will get your name after. This, this man right here, this emperor. All right, so we're looking at New Rome. There'll be a young nobleman named Justinian. Yep. Root word Justin. So if you're named Justin, you know anybody named Justin, this is where they get their name. Sorry. Succeeded his uncle to the throne of the Eastern Empire. So this is the emperor that's really going to stick out in the Byzantine Empire. Yeah, he's the main guy. You've got to know about that's right. His first action was to take back the lost Western Empire from the Germanic tribes. So he's trying to go back to the West. All right. Conquer it. They fought a war that lasted over 15 years. And eventually, Justinian won and regained nearly all the lost territory. So, the map you knew before that was the Roman Empire, guess what? It's back, but not for very long. Yep. Yeah. Justinian. Justinian. Right. Check right. out that dude. That might be like a little ball headed. That might be like my ancestor. You know, we're going to see more about Justinian in just a minute. Um, but, guys, he's going to do way more than just reconquer the lost territory. Hey, look. That could be like the original PGH right there. That's Groves right there. And that's Horn. What do you think? I don't know. Sitting next to Justin. Yes. We now, that, that would be me with the bowl of popcorn. The bowl of popcorn. <laughs> oh, <a> popcorn. <laughs> that's All right. your new nickname, popcorn. <laughs> don't Yo, don't popcorn. do that. Let's go, popcorn. Don't do that. All right. So uh, Byzantine emperors are going to be people who rule with absolute power. And this is a very unique thing, guys, because – the church at this time was very, very important to people's lives. And you're going to really see that in the Byzantine Empire with the Christian church. So what these emperors did, what these, the head of the state, they just, not, they weren't only in charge of the empire and the government. They were also over the church. It was both entities. And we're going to see that with all of these guys. It says, we're the head of the state and the church. This will set the stage for much conflict later to come. So you're saying one person was in charge of religion and in charge of the yeah. government at the same time? Yep. That sounds like something that shouldn't be going on, but it was. Yep. was. Well, and the church back during this time, guys, had a whole lot of power and authority. Over, I mean, they, they were basically a government entity in and of themselves. Oh, like a theocracy. Yeah, they could say, hey, your marriage is... Uh, is you can't be married. Your your marriage was never. Um, oh, I can't remember the words that I'm thinking about. But they could rule. They could. They can make the laws yeah. about you know civil situations, marriage, divorce, children, I mean, land, even death, like criminal know, stuff. Yeah, they could rewrite someone's will and say, no, 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 you you weren't left this. You were left this. Or you get yes. nothing. I mean, they could just do all kinds of things. Check out all these folks. Which one do you think looks most like Coach Groves over here? It's this guy. What's that thing? What do you think? Which one do you like? I want to look at all these cool hats. They like some hats, Definitely didn't they? That one. That's me, right? Look at that nose, and he's the one with the cheeks. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, let's move on. Let's go on. All right, life in Nova Roma. Nova Roma. Is that Latin? Yep. Give me your best Roman or Latin accent. Mm, no Veroma. No, but he's from Southern. It's like Southern Italy. I'm from Southern Italy. No Veroma. All right. So, all right. Language is changing. It's going to be a dividing factor between the East and the West. Okay. Uh, most in Byzantium or the Byzantine Empire are going to speak Greek. They're going to bring that language back. They didn't speak Latin like they did in the West. That's going to be a dividing factor big time between the two. All right. Remember, Greek in the East. Latin in the West. And what happens to the language of Latin? It goes <laughs> kaput. It dies. But we still, still speak Greek today. Yeah. Yeah. I just please. said, you know what he said? Look that up. Yes, that's Northern Italy. That's Southern Italy. <laughs> just standing after unification, that's bringing the East and West again. He created 
this code. Now, you need to know all the different codes. Think back all the way back to like Hammurabi's code. Now, uh, you've got the Ten Commandments. You've got the Five Pillars of Faith. You have all these codes. Here comes another big code, Justinian's Code. And he basically updated the old laws and made some new ones. He got rid of some stuff that was really unnecessary, didn't need. It made more user-friendly. People liked it. A good code to follow. Remember, this place is going to last for a 1,000 years. That's right. What he did is going to be amazing. Look at some of the things he regulated, dealing with marriage. We said that once, slavery. Slavery is going to last forever. It's something that's common way back in the ancient times and the classical times. And uh, different things, property, inheritance. You can read the rest. I won't insult your intelligence. Read for yourself. Look what it says, though. The code serves the empire for almost this entire thousand years, yep. for 900 yep, years. This is like some, from some video game or something, huh? I don't know. What in the world? I don't know. That is beautiful. All right, so the role of Christianity in the empire. Again, this is the Byzantine empire. So Constantine the Great, remember, we already mentioned him. He's not part of this empire, but he definitely had a role in its beginning, and in, in especially dealing with Christianity. So Constantine the Great, who is known as the first Christian emperor, really made an impact on leadership and religion due to showing tolerance for different faiths. Due to the influx of Christianity at the time, Constantinople was viewed as the Christian city, a place where Christians would be safe and able to worship freely. Yeah, they wouldn't have a lot of Christians in the West anymore. They'd be run out. All those Germanic tribes came in. They and would some bring, of those, those Germanic tribes were Christians too, right, Coach? There were there were a few, were few, but it was it was not like seen as the center of Christianity. No. This is where basically it kind of it. gets its start, it. and then it's going to bounce back over to the West, and you'll find out about that later on. Yep. Check this dude out. All right, look at the bottom. It does it says Constantine. By this sign conquer. This is him. Look, Look at that feet. sword. He was in shape. He had it going on. I'm kind of jealous. Think they'll ever have a statue of you or not like that? I don't know. All right, check this place out. This is beautiful. Yes. I always wonder why they name it what they did. Wow. It's one of the most beautiful buildings ever built, and they called it Hagia. No, Hagia. Hagia Sophia. I like the name <laughs> Sophia. It's spelled Hagia. Yep. H-A-G-I-A. -A. Pronounce the way you want to pronounce it. Hagia. 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 Maybe that's where they got that. Hagia. Isn't that a song? <laughs> Hagia. Sing it for me. I know you know it better than me. You're younger. You're not going to sing it? Okay. Anyways, here we go. The role of Christianity continued to be an important one into the reign of Justinian. He focused on new architecture, updating buildings, aqueducts, law courts, schools, hospitals. He made this a better place to be. Look at this. He was inspired. He believed that he needed to build great buildings because he was a Christian. And he believed that this was his way of kind of contributing to the Christian faith or the Christian dominance at this time. You see all these buildings. This is the famous one. The yeah, so something really cool about, about Justinian too, guys. When he first came to the throne and, and he came to power, the first thing he wanted to do was to reconquer that lost territory. But after that, what's he going to do with religion? So he actually sends out teams to different places around the world. And he has his teams do a study on Islam, on Judaism, on Christianity. And when they all came back, this is what they wanted to do. And yeah. you know what? The same exact thing is going to happen in Russia years later. That's right. You know, and today, this is what will change over. This is not Christian anymore. You should go and look at what Hagia Sophia is today. It is not the Christian center anymore. This is a good no, place to this, stop. This place is definitely going to inspire cultures in, oh, yeah. in later on. Yeah. Big time. It doesn't inspire First Baptist Church. It don't look like that. No. One. No, not at not all. Not at all. But, like but I think that the main point here, guys, is that Justinian really had a passion for Christian architecture. Architecture, period. But his focus was going to be on the church. And that's symbolic, guys, of him being the head of the state and the role that the church played. Tell you what, let's end right here, dude. And we'll finish it up. Y'all good? We'll get us a part two here in just a minute. It'll be short and sweet. PGH, we're out. You guys are amazing. Yes. Popcorn is in the house. <laughs>